Greetings, listeners. Thanks for joining us, and welcome back to Dark and Disturbed Tales. I am your host, Steve Taylor. Beatles Fan Eyes and his talented guest narrators are devoted to bringing you unsettling stories, creepy tales, and nightmares. Tonight is no different. So without further ado, I now turn the microphone over to Beatles Fan Eyes and his talented voice actors so they can bring you another dark and disturbed tale. My name is Detective Owen Lockhart, and for the last five years I've been chasing a monster. Until recently, I've been a day late and a dollar short, but tonight, I've found the one thing that may blow this case wide open. The monster's most recent victim was found much like the 13 before her, mutilated, partially eaten, and hung on the wall of her home like a trophy. There were no signs of forced entry, and aside from the corpse, the home was spotless. What made this crime different from the others was a small tape recorder. It had been superglued to the hand of the victim, who will remain nameless until the conclusion of this case. What you are about to hear is the only known recording of the killer's voice. While the contents of this recording may seem like the ramblings of a lunatic, it provides crucial information that could potentially lead to the capture of one Fletcher Sims. So without further ado, here is the recording. I'm not sure how long I've been here. I woke up staring at a purple sky, surrounded by black trees with gray leaves. A surreal landscape that stretched as far as my eyes could see. The air was heavy and foul with the stench of sulfur and rotted meat. It's hard to breathe. The lack of fresh air is keeping my mind hazy and discombobulated. I'm... uh, I'm trying to focus, but I can barely remember my own name. My name? What is my name? Is it Fred? Felix? No. No, that's not it. I'm Fletcher. Yeah, Fletcher, that's it. I... I think... The sound of dry leaves and sticks crunching underfoot grabbed my attention. Hey, I... Every muscle in my body tensed as beads of nervous sweat trickled down my face. The black woods around me are deep and dark and the only light is coming from the moon. I glanced up at the sky. What the actual fuck am I looking at? I rubbed my eyes thinking maybe it was double vision, but it wasn't. Two bright bluish white moons hung high in the hazy purple sky, but Before I could process what I was seeing, I heard a sound that made my heart drop into my stomach. Low, guttural growling rumbled from the darkness. Who's ever out there can see me, but I can't see it. I struggled to my feet and tried to clear the fog from my brain, but... I could hear that thing getting closer and closer. I panicked and ran. It was hard not to trip over the roots of the trees, but hearing that thing chasing me 
kept me focused on not losing my footing. My body feels like, like it's on fire. I'm running as fast as I can, and I, I, and I swear I can feel it breathing down my neck, toying with me. I hear it growling, licking its hideous chops, salivating over the idea of making me its next meal. Feel, feel, uh, fear surged through my body and I pushed harder. I was running faster than I ever thought I could, but those woods were getting deeper and darker. It was inevitable. My toe clipped a root and I went tumbling into the darkness. I hit the ground hard. Rag rolled down a steep embankment until I slammed into a tree and everything went black. Screams and gunshots cut through the silence of my unconscious state as some of my memories came flooding back in a horrific, vivid detail. I remember holding a gun. I remember the smell of gunpowder and scorched brain, the feel of warm blood on my face and bits of bone in my beard, the weight of the bag of money in my left hand and the heat from the building I'd left burning in my wake that nothing, a black spot in my brain not allowing me to maintain a continuous stream of thought it just drops off, and I wake up here, wherever the hell here is. I slowly try to move. I don't think I broke anything in the fall, but nearly every inch of me hurts. It's pitch black. I can barely see a few feet in front of me. I guess whatever was chasing me gave up because I don't hear it anymore. The air smells different now. It's crisp and clean, almost sweet. There's an unnerving silence that sends a chill through my body as I roll over and sit up. Wiping the dirt from my face, I see dozens of tiny green eyes reflecting moonlight all around me. As I get up off of the ground and start dusting myself off, I can hear those little things skittering through the leaves all around me, making a high-pitched squeak as they vanish into the night. I fumbled around in the dark for what felt like hours, hoping the sun would rise but it never did. I was sitting down, taking a breather, when I was blindsided by something big. It slammed me onto the ground like a linebacker, and I never heard it coming. Once I got back to my feet, I was face to face with something that looked almost exactly like me, but its skin was pale and slick. Its teeth were jagged and protruding from its drooling mouth. It grunted and charged me, throwing a wild right, connecting with my jaw and knocking me flat on my ass. Before I can react, the other me came crashing down, raining blows. I put up my arms to block the shots, then he grabbed me by the wrist and elbow, pulling my arms up to his mouth before taking a huge bite out of my forearm. God! Chewing the bloody mouthful, continuing his attack. White flashes of light exploding in my vision, Every time his meaty fist cracked my skull, I felt him grabbed, grab my
my now useless right arm and take another bite. I heard the sickening wet crunch of my bones breaking as he bit off my fingers and ate them all. There's a ringing in my ears now, and all of the pain is gone. But I can't move. I feel so cold, yet my vision doesn't fade into black, and I'm, I'm forced to watch this bizarre version of myself devour every bit of me, until the old me is all gone. Then, finally, as I stare up into the purple sky, it's over. There's a long moment of silence. Then I hear my heartbeat and distant voices. There's a bright white light over me and I can hear a woman screaming. A warm wave grips my body and pushes me towards the light. As the voices and the screams get louder, another warm wave pushes me into the light and hands reach out to grab me. They pull me into the warm, bright light, and I scream, taking in huge gulps of the beautiful fresh air. I hear a man's voice excited and filled with exaltation and joy. Congratulations, Mr. and Mrs. Sims. It's a beautiful, healthy baby boy. The tape came to a stop, and I leaned back in my chair. Fletcher Sims. The monster had a name. Now all I needed was a face. Sliding open my desk drawer and grabbing Daddy's little helper, a bottle of aged scotch that I kept on standby, I dumped a generous helping into my coffee and took a sip. It was 3 a.m. My pal in the filing department wouldn't be in for another five hours so I kept digging through evidence bags till my phone rang. One of the black and whites got a call that led to something nasty, and they wanted my help. Since sleep was a foreign concept these days, I put my feet to the street and got moving. It was an ugly wet morning. The rain slick streets weaved through the city, bringing me to what would turn out to be another piece of the puzzle. I found myself in one of the ritziest sides of town, staring at a place I could never afford. Some rookie, fresh off the beat, met me as I stepped out of my car. Nervous, he gave me the rundown. They received the call a little after 2 a.m. When they arrived on the scene, the front door was open, and every light in the house was left on. I could tell by the puke on his collar and the sweat on his brow, whatever was in that house had him shook. Once he was all squared away, I set my sights on the house. Stepping through the door, I was struck by how clean it was. No blood, no signs of a struggle, just an odd sweet smell that hung in the air like cheap perfume. I didn't see anything out of the ordinary till I reached the bedroom. As soon as I opened the door, I knew this was Fletcher's work. As usual, there was no blood, I didn't know how he did it. The human body is a messy thing once you cut into it. Yet somehow, this guy didn't spill a drop. A husband and wife, the bishops, had been slaughtered. The husband, Arnold, had somehow been suspended from the ceiling and gutted. He'd been positioned over his wife, Carmen, who'd been flayed open and gutted as well. The sheer brutality of it all was mesmerizing. I couldn't understand how one man could do this. Once I'd taken all my notes and a few Polaroids, I bagged everything I thought was evidence and headed back outside. The rookie was in his patrol car, so I strolled over to share some info. I didn't have to stick my head in the window to see the officer wasn't resting. His throat had been slit. 
There was so much blood that it was leaking through the crack in the door. Pulling my pistol and backing away, I rushed over to my car, got in, and grabbed the radio. Before I could call for backup, something heavy collided with the back of my skull, and everything went black. I felt a dry, rough hand slap me in the face and heard a familiar voice. Hello, detective. It's about time we met. It was him. I was face to face with the monster, and my vision was almost too blurry to see him. Struggling to focus on him, I narrowed my eyes. He wasn't what I was expecting. I'd imagined him being a hulking madman, but what I saw was a tall, thin man with short hair and thick, horn-rimmed glasses. He slapped me again and leaned in close. While you were out, I took the liberty of injecting you with a paralytic. It should wear off soon, but... I'll be long gone before then. <laughs> he smiled a wicked smile and held up a small cooler. I wouldn't want my dinner spoiled. I heard you've been looking for me. Well, Detective Lockhart, here I am. I've enjoyed watching you these last few years, but I'm afraid our time must come to an end. I'm moving on to greener pastures. I wanted to say goodbye. It's been a pleasure, my friend. <laughs> With that, he flashed me a wicked smile and backed away vanishing in the darkness of the room. Hmm. Well, listener, that was creepy. I am your host, Steve Taylor. Thank you for joining me here at Dark and Disturbed Tales. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>